I'm Isaiah Sharkey, and I'm here with Abasi Concepts, and I love them. It started with my grandfather back home in Chicago. He owned a uh, record shop back in the 80s, and uh, when he passed, you know, passed on, um, a lot of those records, you know, my dad ended up getting them and, and uh, we were listening to everything, you know, um, from George Benson to Steve Lukather with Toto and Quincy Jones records, Stilly Dan records, you know, Pink Floyd records, everything, classical music, funk, you know, gospel. My dad was big, he was a musician too, by the way, he played multiple instruments, but his main, you know, instruments were organ or keys and, and uh, drums. And so when I started gigging, you know, doing, playing with choirs, my dad said, take all the stuff that you learn and incorporate it into, you know, the music that you're playing in the church. And I said, he said, watch what happens. I should say my first bigger gig was uh, the Isley Brothers when I was 18 years old. Before then, I was doing uh, Donald Lawrence and uh, uh, Smokey Norfolk, which are also really major gigs for the gospel industry. Uh, Richard Smallwood and Nita Wilson and all these people. And then from um, the Isley Brothers, in my early 20s, I started working with D'Angelo. And then I stemmed off and worked with other people like, you know, C. Leo Green and um, uh, Steve Jordan, Paul Simon, Dave Matthews, you know, doing gigs with, you know, these people and uh, also recently John Mayer. Bobby Womack, he had a song, and he does something like, uh... It was his version of Fly Me to the Moon, but that was the intro. So, again, it was... And I was like, man, okay, so taking this one little thing. You know. So I said, man, how can I use that? Because that was a pretty cool riff. So. so stuff like Another Life, which I played on D'Angelo's record. Just. I took that thing and put it in, in that.
first I was like, wow, this is crazy, it's interesting, but yet still familiar. It's new, I've never seen anything shaped like it before, um, uh, designed like this. And uh, I usually, when I pick up guitars, I, I try to just play one note just to see how it feels, if it resonates, you know, and it, acoustically first. And uh, play one note and I felt it in the body of the guitar. So that meant, that alone was like, okay, all right, let's see what we're talking about. Plugged up into an amp, played one note again, and it had a lot of character, it had a lot of, uh, I don't know, it just makes you wanna play, makes you wanna play. So I was, you know, I ended up playing the guitar maybe an hour straight before the gig, right into the gig, you know. And uh, man, the look of it, the feel, it just feels like a new guitar, but yet still like an, an old, worn in, familiar guitar, you know. So that's what I dig about it. play with dynamics it'll give you everything you need you know so if I if I want to hit it soft I want to it speaks you know you know it's talking you know speaking see that you know hear that coming out I mean <laughs> I mean you don't have to do much the good, you know, the guitar it plays itself, you know what I mean? Only old guitars do this, you know, vintage guitars that you spend like $18,000 for, $20,000, you don't get that. It's, man, come on, man. <laughs> Come on, that's all I can say.